Good day. Welcome to Fresh Manna Ministries, hosted by Reverend Dr. Alan G. Jenkins, Jr. and yours truly, Benjamina Jenkins, and a host of pastors, evangelists, teachers, ministers, prayer warriors, and partners. Together we are on a mission to encourage, equip, and strengthen the body of Christ and to win lost souls for the kingdom of heaven. My sister Tawana, star six in. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, I have you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, I just want to um, give thanks to my Father in heaven, hallelujah, for giving me this opportunity to share a word, hallelujah. I ask that the Holy Spirit have his way in Jesus' name, Lord, God, my voice in Jesus' name. Lord, let my will not be done, but your will be done. In Jesus' name, Lord, I ask that the Lord guide and keep me, Lord, that he direct me as I share this word, that the glory may be given to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray for your blessings, your guidance, and everything that I need. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, we'll, I'm going to be reading from coming out of First Peter chapter five, verses eight through nine. Again, First Peter chapter five, verses eight through nine. It reads in verse eight: Be sober-minded and watchful or vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, rolls around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Verse 9 says, resist him, be firm in your faith, knowing that the same kind of suffering is being experienced by other believers throughout the world. Now let's think about what Peter is saying in this text. Um, Verse 8 in 1 Peter chapter 5 commands us to be sober-minded and vigilant. Now sober can be defined as thinking clearly, to be serious, not intoxicated, not drunk, clear-minded. It means self-controlled or disciplined in the mind. So now we go back to this first thing, being sober-minded. These are some of the words that we can define as sober-minded. Now when we go on to... Um, it also states in verse 8 to be sober-minded and vigilant or watchful. So vigilant, we define vigilant as to mean to be watchful, awake, not sleep, cautious, always alert, because we have an adversary, our enemy, the devil, who is searching for a believer to t- attack and hopefully kill. So to be sober-minded and to be vigilant is a mindset or a lifestyle we must have so that we are not destroyed or killed by our adversary, the devil. Now, this is a warning given by Peter, who wrote the text of First Peter in the Bible, that chapter in the Bible. Um, the word also says in John 10, 10, that Jesus states that the thief comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. So as followers of Christ and believers, we must know that we are on the battlefield, that there is a spiritual war going on, and we must always be awake and alert because we have an adversary. Who we know from these two scriptures are dangerous, prowling around like a warrior lion. Imagine a lion being let out the zoo. He got uncaged and he's waiting to pounce on somebody. Devour means to eat. So that's why God is wanting us to be alert, to be awake, to be sober-minded, to be vigilant, because there's a lion rolling around waiting to eat believers. 
or devour believers. So how many of you know that when you decided to live a life of righteousness and walk closer with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, that our life was automatically put into turmoil and suffering? Ephesians 6.12 states that we battle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and powers in high places. So we're not fighting people. We we battling against evil spirits, the kingdom of darkness, Satan and his followers, according to Ephesians six twelve. So when we look at this example and when we hear um these words that once we accepted Christ, we already stepped in onto the battlefield between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. Now we think about us um, having to be alert, having to be vigilant, having to be um, in tune with God. We want to look at the example from Job chapter 1, where it says, Satan the devil sought out God in the heavenly places to wage war on one of God's servants. And God said to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? Satan at this time accused Job of only fervently fearing God because of God's favor and all the blessings that God had given him in his life, his fortune, his wealth, the hedge of protection that the Lord had put around him. So we see right here that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Now he's in the heavenly realm standing before God to accusing Job of not being faithful to God. The devil said to Jesus, you know, that uh, Job will curse you to your face once his blessings and prosperity and fortune that God has given him was taken away. So at this point, God allowed the devil to tempt Job. But he declared that the devil was not able to take Job's life. So we, so we know that our adversary, this shows us right here, that our adversary has to get permission from God. So as, as the story goes on in regards to the first chapter of Job 1, we learn that in, the first, in one day, witnesses reported to Job that the devil had killed all Job's 10 children by a disaster where the house that they all were in collapsed upon them. Job had seven sons and three daughters. They all were killed at the same time in the house. Witnesses also reported to Job that same day that his animals were stolen and all his servants were murdered by swords. He also learned that his sheep and some of the other servants that tended to the sheep was burnt by a lightning fire that struck down from the heavens to the earth. It was also reported to Job that his camel, camels were stolen and more servants were murdered by, by the sword. So as you see, Job wasn't having a really good day. Now let's go back. Now let's get to the 20th verse. So it was indicated when we get to verse 20, after Job experienced in all this in one day, it indicated that Job praised God after all these disasters had happened. In verse 22, it states that Job did not sin or blame any wrongdoing on God, although all his kids had gotten murdered, all his animals were stolen, all his servants were killed. You know, and also he himself was afflicted. Himself was afflicted. He was afflicted with sores, boils, and blisters all over his body as a result as well. And as we go on further, his own wife, Job's own wife, told him to curse God and die. But Job remained faithful. He did not listen to the wife of his the voice of his wife. 
He continued to praise God. He continued to, to stand steadfast, although he was being persecuted by the devil. His faith continued to be in our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Even Job's friends came to visit him because they were surprised of all the horrific things that was happening in Job and what was going on with Job. And at that time, his friends couldn't believe what was going on. They wasn't walking by faith. They was walking by sight at that time because we, we walked by faith, not by sight. So his friends, you know, started accusing him of you had to do, maybe you did something. They believed that he had sinned or did something to upset God because they couldn't believe that all these, that God would allow all these things to happen to his faithful servant, Job, who seemed to be so pre- so blessed, so prosperous, doing well, a man of God in the public view. And now in one day he's having all these horrific, unfortunate things occur in his life. And now his friends who are also believers now are starting to second guess Job and accuse him of wrongful doing saying maybe you sinned against God, maybe you did something to upset God. But then through all these accusations, Job remained faithful to the Lord. So this is just an example of how we ourselves need to be need to behave when we're under persecution. Because as you know, the the ninth scripture, the ninth verse stated that this is this that suffering is commonly experienced by other believers as well all over the world. So we're not the only ones. Job wasn't the only ones getting attacked by the enemy. Job wasn't the only one being afflicted and suffering as a result of his Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. You know, so we gotta be prepared. We got to stand fast. We got to remain faithful. We got to do the will of God and not our own will when we're going through our tribulation. Because the road might be tough, but we got to remember that God will never leave or forsake us. That God stands with us during our time of trouble. So, um, you know, and we will make it through if we continue to trust in the Lord. So you remember his friends at that time thought Job sinned because they couldn't believe that God would do something like this. Job, But Job remained faithful. He continued to pray to God. He continued to talk to God. He continued to praise God. And then finally, you know, Job overcame his battle, and the victory was his. Because Psalm 34, verse 19, 20 states that many, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. Proverbs 13, 21, scripture states that misfortune pursues the sinner, but prosperity is the reward of the righteous. Now, we must remember, even Jesus, our Savior, was attacked by the devil. Three separate times when he was in the mountains after fasting for 40 days while he lived on this earth. So as believers, we must now know that we are not exempt from the the double attack. That we must stand firm in our faith and continue to praise and pray and seek his faith during our attacks because he is our very help in the time of trouble. Romans 8.37 says that in all things, we are more than a conqueror. How many of you know that we are more than a conqueror? As we see in Job, Job was more than a conqueror. As we see with Jesus, even Jesus, the Son of God, our Savior, who came to this earth to give his life for our sins, was also attacked by the devil and tempted by Satan three different times. And Jesus was victorious when it came to his attacks from the devil. But 
God didn't allow him not to be attacked just because he was the son or the savior of God. And if he is our Lord and Savior and he was allowed to be attacked by the demon or the devil or adversary, what do you think the future holds for us, the believers, that we also at one time in our life are going to face the adversary? They're going to be tempted, and we got to stand strong in our faith. we got to put on the whole armor of God. Romans 8, 37, again, tells us that in all things, God gives us the victory. We are more than a conqueror. We learn from Job that our God is bigger than our trouble. We must remember that our God is bigger than our trouble. Yes, God, Job had trouble. But God was bigger than the trouble that the enemy sent his way. Because in the end, he got rewarded doublefold. He got blessed tremendously. His life was restored. He had double the amount of riches he had prior to this incident happening. He had more children. All his fortune was doubled as a result of his faithfulness to the Lord. So when we go in through our test, our tribulation, our time and suffering, we must remember to stand in the righteousness of Jesus Christ with our full armor on, knowing that our God is faithful. We must trust God. We must believe that our God and know that God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him and are faithful to him. Now, and we also must remember that God can do anything but fail in the time of our trouble. He can't fail. We got to put our trust in him. We got to believe that our Lord and Savior will rescue us in the time of trouble. And we can we can name plenty of examples where the Lord showed up and showed out. Where the devil thought he had you, and God said, no, not so. So we must first make God our refuge. We must first believe on his word. And we must continue to stand in prayer, worship, praise, and reading the word during our suffering. We must not be bamboozled or distracted by the tactics or strategies of the devil. The devil's mission is to get our mind off of Jesus and get our mind on him. We must not fear. We must stand in our righteousness, not our own strength, but our strength through Jesus the Christ. And let go and let God. Because God will surely deliver you in the time of trouble. Because his word is truth and his word doesn't lie. So we must remember that God can do anything but fail at this time. And in our time of trouble, he is there waiting to assist us waiting for us to see his face, waiting for us to send up prayers in his name, waiting for us to worship him as our Lord and Savior. Because who is Jesus? He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Son of God who came to seek and save those who are lost. And now he sits at the right hand of God the Father. So when we go through our struggles and our suffering, we must remember to first trust God. We must remember to stand by God. We must remember to call on the name of Jesus. And we must remember no matter what we are going through, that God will get us through that we can make it, that there is no problem too greater for our God to solve because our God is bigger than our trouble. 
There is nothing God won't do for his children if we stand and trust God. We got to trust God. We got to be sober-minded. And we remember what sober is. Sober is the opposite of drunk. We got to be vigilant. We got to be awake. We can't be asleep at the will. We got to be watchful because we know we got an enemy pouncing around, waiting to pounce on the unbeliever who is not prepared. Are you prepared for the battle today? Because you know we on the battlefield. Once you accepted Christ and said the Lord's Prayer and started walking in your righteousness, you became a target for the devil. And you're on the battlefield whether you like it or not. And one of the main most strategies that we got to be careful about when it comes to our adversary, this is a battlefield of the mind. We got to be strong in our word. We got to be strong in our faith and believe in the word of God and know what God's word said is true because the word does not lie. Because one of the primary tactics of the devil is first to mess with our mind. We first heard about, you know, the devil in in Genesis, the third chapter, when he tricked Eve in her mindset and caused her to eat from the forbidden tree because she didn't really know the word. She didn't really trust God. And she believed the lie that the devil presented to her by saying God didn't really say you can't eat from that tree, did he? Because the serpent doesn't come off like an enemy at first. He's sneaky, he's sly, he's slick. He comes off friendly, like he's your friend. And the whole time, he's a lion waiting to pounce, waiting to devour you. He wants to kill you, eat you for breakfast, destroy you. And then she falls into the trap because she, you know, believed a lie that he told her, oh, you would be like God if you ate up the apple. God knows you will be like God. So she wasn't strong in her spirit, and she got tricked by the enemy. So that's why we got to be vigilant. We have to be awake because the thief comes nothing but to kill, steal, and destroy, and he's out to destroy our lives. He's out to take our salvation. He's out to kill our soul. His first aim is to get us to burn in hell forever and ever with him to be tormented. So if he can get you to trust him and not trust God, then he's won the battle. If he can get you to believe in him and not believe in God, then he's won the battle. If he can get you to conform to the ways of this world, and not make the Lord your refuge. Make the Lord the leader, the ruler over your life. We hear many slogans today. I am the captain of my ship. You can do as you want. You're free to do as you please. Do as I will. That's opposite of the word of God. God don't tell you to do as you will. You ain't free to do as you will once. You become a child of the king. You're supposed to seek God and follow his lead. He said, my sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow me. So that's the description of what God is saying. That he is our refuge. That in every part of his life, we're supposed to seek him. And trust him, our God. And then we also know that one of the, one of the most famous tricks of the enemy is also to convince believers that there is no demon, there is no devil, there is no adversary. Although you hear it all the time, how many of you truly believe that the devil truly exists? They did a survey not too long ago on most Christians' belief in regards to the devil. And it was reported that most Christians actually believe the devil is just a symbol of evil in the Bible. 
or they don't really even know much about the devil to know that he even exists. So if the enemy can have you believing that the devil isn't real, that you're not on the battlefield, then his, his, his fight will be easy. He will slay you without a problem because you don't even have your armor on because you don't even believe that the devil exists or that you are fighting a uh, spirit. Because Ephesians chapter 6, 12 tells us we fight not against blood and flesh, but our battle is with evil spirits in the heavenly realm. So with the kingdom of darkness, the devil and all his followers, the unseen people, the invisible spirits that most of us can't see on a daily basis, we are battling these spirits. So that's why we got to stay awoke and we got to be vigilant like the word says and be sober-minded in our walk with Jesus the Christ. Because only if our mind is sober, we will not be able to be deceived, tricked, or bamboozled by the wealth of the devil. Because the devil is a crafty master manipulator. We must not underestimate our enemy. We know what he can do if we read the word. Because when he got thrown out of the kingdom of heaven for wanting to be like God, and thinking he was God, he took one-third of the angels with him. So he has some ability where he was able to convince angels to turn away from God and follow him. He has some ability that he was able to convince Adam and Eve to not trust God, disobey him, and eat of the apple, and now they gave up their freedom and their salvation as their obedience from the Lord and was kicked out of the Garden of Eden. So we must not underestimate the lion, who is also known as our adversary, the devil, Satan, the destroyer. He has many names. That's why God warns us to be alert, because you have an enemy that's dangerous. He's studying you all the time, waiting for an opportunity of weakness so he can pounce and devour you. And we must, be, we must refuse to be devoured by the enemy. And how we refuse to be devoured is we must continue to adhere to God's word. Because we know the word is true and the word does not lie. We must be obedient to the will of God. We must first repent of our sins, then live a holy life free from sin. And if we do sin, we must repent like the Bible says, ask for forgiveness in Jesus' name. We must continue to praise. We must continue to read his word. We must continue to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Because this is what God commands his children to do. This commandment to be sober and to be vigilant, he ain't asking you to do this. Your life depends on it. He's telling you that we must do this if we want to defeat our adversary. Because the devil has been here for years studying us. He knows our weaknesses. But the good thing about this, God always makes a way of escape for us when we are tempted. We always have a way out. Because the devil knows what your weakness is, what you're weak for, and he will dangle that thing right in front of your face when you're in your weakest moment. And we've seen that. He attacked Jesus when he was in his weakest moment. After fasting for 40 days in the mountain, he attacked Jesus. So what makes you think if he did that to the Lord and Savior, the king of the world, you know what he'll do for the believers, the sheep who was following the good shepherd. So that's why we got to be on guard at all times. We got to know our adversary strategies, his plans for our lives. We got to believe that the devil is not just a symbol of evil in the Bible. It's just something that, you know, a scare tactic by the religion to keep us on point with God. No, the devil truly exists. We are really in a spiritual battle. 
This is not a joke, saints. This is for real. This is the real deal. And a lot of people are, you know, convinced that things are just happening, unfortunate events just occurring. That is not so, according to the Bible. It's a spiritual battle between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. The minute we accepted Christ as our personal Savior and became one of God's children, we, we, we was put on the battlefield to battle. So we got to remember that our Lord, Jesus Christ, is the good shepherd who protects the sheep. And God won't put more on you than you can bear. That's what the word says. He won't give you more than you can bear. When Satan was seeking God to wage war against Job, God voluntarily volunteered Job because God knew what Satan was up there for and what he was thinking. Because our God is at all places at all times, sees all things, hears all things, knows all things. The devil don't have that quality. He can only hear what comes out of your mouth, but he's not a mind reader. He can't hear your inner thoughts. So God knew Job was a faithful servant, that he was up for the task, that he would be victorious in Jesus' name. That's why he offered him up. The devil wanted to sip him like wheat. He came up on the heavenly throne, the cruising Job of the only reason why he's serving you is because of all the blessings and favor and good things that you gave him in his life. If you take that here to protection away and all the fortune and wealth and everything you bless him with, he will curse you to his face. That's what Satan told God about Job. He is the accuser of the brethren, as they say in the word. He was accusing Job of not being faithful, not being loyal to his, self, his Lord and Savior. So you can imagine what he says about us in the heavenly realms when he goes to get permission from our Father to tempt us and lead us astray, to try to lead us astray. But we know if we if we stay resilient, remain steadfast, persevere to be in the presence of God, don't give up, don't quit. Because you remember the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. All you got to do is stand in your faith, stand in your righteousness, believe on your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and God will do the right. And we got to resist the devil because in the the book of James, chapter 4, it says, submit to God. If we submit ourselves to God, the devil must flee. So the devil can't remain if you submit you will to God. So when our temptation come our way, that's what the Bible tells us we require to do. And the devil will flee. Because we got to remember, our God can do anything but fail. And also remember, our, our God is bigger than our trouble. He is the great I am. He is the lion of Judah. Hallelujah. There is no God greater than our God. He is the king of all kings, Lord of all lords. He is Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Emmanuel Yeshua. He is our savior. He is our redeemer. He is everything we need. Hallelujah. But how many of y'all believe that today? And we got to just know that the Lord will never leave and forsake us in our time of trouble. He is right there with us. Anciently waiting to assist us, waiting for our prayers to go up, waiting for the worship and praise to go up, waiting for us to continue to read the word. Because that's important for us to be successful and and victorious in our trials. So when we think of Job, you know, and how he handled the situation. And then we just flat back on Adam and Eve and how they handled the temptation of God. And we just flat back on how the devil was able to bring one-third of the angels out of heaven with them. He is dangerous. And we got to be watchful. 
Because if we sleep at the well, we can potentially be devoured. And that's why God is sending out a warning to his children to be ready for the enemy when he shows up, to be ready for the, the destroyer when he shows up, to not be fearful, to trust in the Lord. Because he is our refuge. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is our redeemer. My God is sovereign. He is our God. He is our provider. He is our protector. And lastly, he is our savior. Now remember, Jesus is king of kings and lords of lords and sit at the right hand of our heavenly father on the throne. And he's coming back again soon. Now ask yourself, will you be ready? Think about this thing. Jesus is coming back soon. We're in the last days. We're in the wicked times. We're getting all the warnings. We see everything going on. We see Revelation, chapters of Revelation, the book of Revelation being revealed before our eyes. We know it's only a short time left before when Jesus comes back. But the word says no one knows the hour or the time. He's going to come back like a thief in the night. And are we and are we going to be on the battlefield with our full armor on, doing the will of the Lord, fighting for the kingdom of God, preaching the gospel, making fishers of men like God commands, casting out demons like God commands, taking authority over the kingdom of darkness because God gave us that authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, the authority to command demons, the authority that demons must obey us. The power. Are we walking in our authority, our righteousness in Jesus Christ? Are we delivering people? Are we healing folks, as Jesus said, that we should be able to do the same miracles at a greater level than he did after he left the Holy Spirit, his comforter with us? Are we doing as the disciples commanded us to do? Share Jesus with the world. Bring the good news, which is the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the story of the baby Jesus being born, who is the Savior of the world, who came to seek and save those who are, who died, who rose again on the third day, and sits at the right hand, our resurrected Savior, Jesus. The good news is the gospel. He came to repair the problem that Adam and Eve created, to set us free from the bondage of sin, to set us free from the foot of the devil. We're free now. we no longer under the bondage of sin. Jesus fixed that when he went to the cross and shed his blood for us. He gave us liberty. Because the word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We're free now. We have freedom of choice. We're no longer slaves to the devil. If you are born again Christian, you accepted Christ and you believe in this word, and you study and to show thyself approved unto God. The word says study to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. As children of God, we commanded to study the word of God. Why? We need to have the word of God in our hearts close to our heart, so when the attacks of the enemy come, we can slay that demon with the word of God. The word cuts like a two-edged sword on the battlefield. Because we fight in an invisible battle. Spirits are invisible. Most of us don't always see demons, but they're there. We're being attacked daily by the kingdom of darkness. So we must be vigilant. We must stay focused. We must know our enemy and what his mission is. So when we on a battlefield, we know how to battle them. And we must know our primary tool is to protect our mind because it's mainly the battlefield of the mind. Without faith, it's impossible to please Jesus. Without faith, it's impossible to please Jesus. We got to believe in our heart and know that the word is true. And that God is our refuge. And that God is our healer, our deliverer, our protector, our redeemer, our sovereign God. 
He is the greatest God ever. He is mightier than any God. There is no one greater than him. There is no problem he can't solve. He will never leave us or abandon us in the time of trouble. In fact, the Bible says in the time of trouble, he is our very help. He is the one we should be calling on. And it says those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Lord will protect us. Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. The Lord is going to comfort you in a time of trouble. He's going to be your protector. We just got to trust God. We got to believe God when the Satan shows his ugly face. We got to stand on God's word. We got to trust on God and do his will so that when Jesus comes back again, we'll be ready. We will hear, well done, my faithful servant, not depart from me. You work of iniquity, I never knew you. We don't want to hear those words because in the Bible it says that in Matthew chapter 7 that many will say, Lord, Lord, haven't I done this? Cast out demons in your name. I prophesy in your name. And that's, that's referring to false prophets. So we got to be careful not to be deceived by false prophets and led astray. People think they're doing the will of the Lord, and they're not. They're being used by their vessel being used by the devil, and they don't even realize it. And then they're going to get in the last day saying, Lord, Lord, haven't I done this? And God don't know you. He don't know you because he don't have a relationship with you. You wasn't following his will. You didn't make him ruler over your life. You was doing your own thing. You was in a religion. You was caught up in the religion and the tradition, but you didn't know Jesus. You wasn't reading his word as he commands. You wasn't sharing Jesus as he commands. You wasn't studying the book, worshiping him, fasting and praying, sharing the good news, casting out demons, walking in your authority, putting on your full armor, preparing for war every day. Because every day we're at war with the adversary. It's not a one-time thing. It's a 24-hour thing. Every minute, every hour, every second, we at war with the devil. And we can't afford to be asleep not one minute at the will. We got to have our full armor, our full armor of God on, the breastplate, the helmet of salvation, the belt girdle, the truth, the golden of truth. We got to have it all on so that we are saved. And we don't leave ourselves open for any attack of the enemy or the devil who walks around like a warrior lion seeking who he may devour. Listen to that scripture, the theme scripture seeking. Imagine being at the zoo and the lion just jumped out of the cage. What you going to do? You already know you're going to be eaten if you don't get out of God. You got to do something. So this is what God is saying about the devil, he's looking to eat one of God's believers. Devour you means to eat or destroy you. And you know what happens when the person is eaten by a lion. They tore to pieces. They tore to shreds. They normally don't survive. So that's why we can't afford to be playing at the will. We got to be what God says, sober-minded. Sober is opposite of drunk. Not drunk. Not drunk with the uh, amusements of this world, because drunkenness could be anything. Drunkenness can mean alcohol. Drunkenness can mean you doing dope. Drunkenness can mean, you know, you on social media all day. Drunkenness can mean Facebook. Anything that takes the place of God or distracts your mind from doing the will of God, building God's kingdom, preaching the gospel, studying, prayer, worshiping, calling on your Savior. Anything that takes you away from that is a problem. And that's why we have to be sober. We got to be serious. We got to have clear thinking. We can't think from a distorted mindset. Because when we drunk, we think it from a distorted mindset. 
We ain't clear. We not self disciplined. We ain't exhibiting self control over our minds. Now we can be influenced by the devil. Now he can manipulate our minds and get us to lead us astray from what God wants us to do. That's why we need to be sober. And vigilant. Always watching. Being on alert because you know that devil is waiting to pounce. And we don't want to be caught by that lion and be his breakfast for the morning because we were asleep and not, not vigilant, not awoke, not watchful, not knowing that we're on the battlefield. We don't have our armor on. We unprepared for the battle. You know, the enemy and the adversary would love to catch one of God's believers unprepared for the battle. That would be his dream to catch you out there sleeping so he could beat you down real good. So this word is to keep us on the right path, keep us obedient with God, that we will do as the Lord tells us to do. And when Jesus comes back again, we will have the victory because we know Jesus is coming back to reward his faithful servants. We shouldn't be fearful of the coming of Jesus. Even though we see in all the signs and we know it's close, we know it's here soon, this is a happy moment for the true believers of God. This is the time that we are going to be rewarded for our faithfulness to our Lord and Savior, for living a holy life, for standing in our righteousness, for following Jesus the Christ. Doing the will of the Lord. Because the Bible says only what you do for the Father will last. Anything else really don't matter. What did you do for the kingdom of Christ? What did you do for Jesus? Did you follow his commandments? Because the word says if you love me, you will follow my commandments. If you love God, you will obey. Who And it also says you can't serve two masters. Who you obey is your master. So all of y'all that saved and did the sinner's prayer, but you ain't never obeying God, and you're doing everything else but what God tells you to do, you are in rebellion against your Lord and Savior. You are not saved, according to the word. And if Jesus came back right now, you would not be going with him. Because you can't live, you can't live any kind of way after you got saved and said the sinner's prayer. But see, that's the lie that the devil tells us. That's another strategy that's often used by the devil with the kingdom of God. Many people in the church think, it's, oh, they're good because they said the sinner's prayer, therefore they're saved. But they can live their life however they want because they got God's grace. Well, according to Revelation chapter 12, no, the 22nd chapter, around 12 verse, that we're going to be rewarded for our works when Jesus comes back. Everyone is going to be judged on their individual works. So that whole, just because I believe, yeah, you need to believe, but you need to have some works too. So if you said the sin is fair and you still live in a sinful life, then are you really saved? No, you're not according to the Bible. Because it says works, faith without works is dead. Faith means belief in Jesus. You believe that Jesus died and rose again. He's coming back again. He's the true Messiah. He's the Savior of the world. He shed his blood on the cross from us. But you don't make Jesus Lord over your life. So is he really your Lord? Because when you make him Lord over your life, you will be obedient to your father. You won't be in rebellion against your father. You won't say you're a Christian and you live in a life of a sinner, but claiming to know Jesus. How? Because the word says we have to be transformed in our minds. And how the transformation comes is by reading the word of God. Our spirit man is built up. Our faith is built up. We become stronger in the Lord. We're reading the word. We're being fed. We're growing spiritually. So to grow spiritually, you got to read his word. You got to seek God's faith. Because the word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and I shall provide everything else. Once you see God, he will provide everything that you need. So, saints, we got to remember that our Lord is bigger than the trouble we face. Our God is bigger. Our God is great. Our God is almighty and all-powerful. He's undefeated. 
We are more than a conqueror. There is nothing we can't do without Jesus, with Jesus. Long as we got Jesus, we can do it all. So remember, saints, be be sober minded, be vigilant while on the battlefield. Stay focused. Don't get tricked by the deceptions of the devil. In Jesus' name, I I'm finished. I pray, but I just want to say God bless. And I hope this word has touched someone in a mighty way, that someone can give God the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join us next time. And remember to subscribe, Fresh Manna Ministries. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Number 6, verse 24 to 26. God bless you. Have a great day.